decision, a single mistake will cost them the game, will cost them their shot at the World Final. 50-50. TP now coming in. Everything being bet on this smite. Oh Maybe no. Goes to sleep. Kana now stepping forward. 3k getting lower. The Kana dragon. going all the, the way trying to lock up the but who's going to get it? No! In the end, it is Canyon! When it matters most, you will find the smite. Megumi Yushi standing strong on the backside. It does not matter. In the face of the Elder, Dawa Kia will wipe T1 off the map. What's up, everyone? I'm Captain Flowers, and I want to welcome you back to the Out Play by Play World's Edition. Holy sh! What a tournament and what a time to be alive. I know a lot of y'all are hungry for that finals breakdown, and you'll get it in due time. But today, we're going to break down one of the most anticipated matchups the entire tournament long as we jump into the semifinals between the absolute juggernauts of T1 and Dom1. Let's take a deep dive into the action and see how the reigning world champs stood their ground and surgically picked apart T1 in that final game five en route to a back-to-back -back finals berth. Now, before we get into the final moments, let's take a look at both teams' drafts. Because let me tell you, there was never a dull moment in this game. Dom1 go for a comp with lots of range, poke, and pick potential while placing a focus on single target damage to burst T1's carries down with Zoe's bubble and Zig's ultimate. Talon and Rakan act as options for instant points of engage to weave in and out of skirmishes, while Zig's satchel and slow punish the Zillion revive. T1 on the other hand, go for a heavy teamfight comp with lots of damage, anti-engage, and an emphasis on scaling to unleash their late game carries with Gumiyushi's comfort pick of Felios and Faker's Azir. But with limited engage tools and a lack of frontline into rangy poke champs, closing the distance for those 5v5 team fights becomes especially difficult. With that in mind, it's pivotal for both teams to play to their strengths. As T1 looks to play it out for the late game and find windows of opportunity for flank engages into 5v5 brawls, whereas Damwon look to abuse their range advantage for picks and deny any chances of a T1 onslaught. To kick things off, both teams played a close back and forth, with T1 greeting a familiar face in the top lane to draw first blood in four out of the five games. First. Just shortly after, it was Kana who found himself on the other end of the stick after a DK gank to return the blow. But the story of the game was more or less around how well Damwon played to the strengths and harmony of the Zoe and Ziggs combo. 11 minutes in, take a look at Showmaker, who threads the needle to land the sleepy bubble onto Gumiyushi before Barrel locks him up with a chain of CC to delete his health bar. With Karia's ultimate up, he instantly revives his duo, but pay attention to Ghost, who drops a satchel for the knockback onto Gumiyushi to prevent the escape and send him to his grave. As the game went on, both teams traded objectives. Though T1 secured the Rift Heralds, it was Damwon who continued their relentless poke and took control of the Drakes as a result. 16 minutes in, after T1 summons Shelly mid, take a look at Canyon, who spots a lingering Kana on the back line and vaults himself over the wall to force the Kinnon ultimate out. At the same time, watch Showmaker, who lands the sleepy bubble onto Owner while Ghost rains down the bomb from above. Just like that, with three members of T1 on low health bars, Damwon would easily go on to secure the Infernal Drake. And it didn't stop there. 21 minutes in, with Soul Point around the corner and Baron in play, take a look at Showmaker, who once again puts Owner to sleep before Ghost follows up to force Azillion Revive. Despite the Zig's knockback, Owner actually ends up escaping with just a quarter of his health. It's at this point that T1 try to turn the tides with a double TP from both sides to collapse. But the reigning world champion sniffed this out, and without a way into the dragon pit, Damwon moved to soul point. However, with Baron still up, T1 rotate to the other side of the map, and without any vision, Damwon are forced to face check with Kana sneaking in on the back line. After realizing they've walked right into four members of T1, they immediately retreat. But Kana, who's now fully made his way around, flashes in for the engage as T1 first kill off Barrel and then Khan who teleports in. With two players dead and Showmaker on low HP, T1 had found their window of opportunity to safely secure Baron. Right? Wrong. Watch as Showmaker and Ghost once again wreak havoc from afar. This time with just a Zoe Paddlestar and Zig's ult to nearly kill Faker, who's forced to pop Zonia's. At the same time, Karia also burns his Chrono Shift in an effort to save his star mid laner as Faker flashes away to safety. 
And so, with three members of T1 on low HP after getting obliterated by the Dom Juan Pope, and the threat of Canyon lurking in the shadows, they're forced to reset. As the game went on, it was more or less the same. Despite the gold differential barely skewing in either side's favor, the reigning world champs were slowly bleeding T1 out without any answer. Dom Juan played their composition to a T, moving just within range to poke and harass, while knowing when to move out of range to avoid a T1 all-in. And even when the poke wasn't an issue, it was Canyon's phenomenal patience and positioning that found Dom Juan the picks they needed to delay and secure pivotal objectives. It will just be a one for one at the end of the day for T1, but Canyon buying so much time. With neither jungler available here, are T1 just willing to flip the bear and there's assist things onto it. They know they're about to lose soul here. They lost control of the mid lane but they don't have anyone to tank up the Baron. I don't think they can get anything. And despite the traded kills, Damwon get the soul. And so, 29 minutes into the game, with a near dead even gold differential and towers destroyed, it's T1 who look to make a play on Baron. As the Damwon cavalry arrive, they can't see a single thing in the pit thanks to a control ward. And with Faker zoning Canyon away, T1 easily secure the objective. It's at this point that four members of T1 look for the great escape, while Owner falls as the sacrificial lamb after getting caught by the sleepy trouble bubble yet again. But as they look to retreat into the top side brush for a recall, Ghost, who had been stellar all game, once again drops the Ziggs bomb from above to stall their backs. From there, it's all but downhill for the side of T1 as they get cornered into a dead end with nowhere to run. As Dom Juan walk up, Showmaker drops a Farsight Trinket to reveal both Faker and Carrion. Watch as he first closes the distance with Zoe's Portal Jump, before landing the Heat-Seeking Paddle Star onto Carrion for the kill. From there, he instantly flashes forward to land the Sleepy Bubble onto Faker, who gets revived. But with the rest of DK swarming the scene, T1 get picked apart as Dom Juan work together for the ace. With that fight, Dom Juan would go on to rip through T1's base destroying the remaining top turrets, inhibitor, and a nexus turret to nearly end the game, but are met by owner and Karia, who stall for just long enough for Gumayushi to respawn and fend off the attack before both teams reset for the series deciding fight. 34 minutes into the game, with super minions pushing top and Elder Drake around the corner, it's do or die for the side of T1. But pay attention to Faker, who's forced away from his team to clear the top wave and prevent any chance of a back door. So, with the advantage in positioning and map control, Dom Juan start the dragon. As they begin chunking away, Owner drops a control ward in the pit to reveal just 50% of the health bar remaining. It's at this point that T1 know their tournament lives are on the line and they have to contest. But what happens next is really just the downfall for T1. Take a look at Faker, who channels his teleport into the mid lane brush. Dom Juan immediately spots this, and Showmaker perfectly times the Zoe bubble to land as the TP comes in. Then, as Faker shifts over the wall, he eats the oncoming Ziggs bomb despite having Zonia's at his disposal, bringing him down to just a sliver of health. At the same time, take a look at Owner, who desperately dashes over the wall for the smite fight, but is met by Barrel, who dashes in and sends him airborne. What's important to note here is that despite being knocked up, Owner can still smite the Drake while being CC. But take a look at Canyon, who uses his ult plus smite to beautifully secure the Elder Drake with a whopping 1.1k health remaining. And just like that, it's all but over for the side of T1 as the dominoes begin to fall. Faker, who was hanging by the skin of his teeth, gets popped by the Elder Dragon Execute before even getting the chance to deal any damage. Gumayushi actually puts up a valiant effort and burns Canyon's Guardian Angel in the back line, but meets his death as well. Kana and Karia get cleaned up by Khan for the double kill. And Owner? Well, he's just scraps as Dom Juan mopped the floor with T1 for the ace and the end to an absolute scorcher of a game. Oh yeah, there was also Showmaker, who got a little too carried away with the celebrations and died to his stationary Aphelios turn. I said <laughs> I'm Captain Flowers, and that does it for this week's episode of the Out Play by Play World's Edition. What do you think? Did T1 stand a chance if Owner won the Elder Smite fight, or were Dom Juan destined to run away with it no matter what? 
Be sure to let me know in the comments and be sure to follow at LOL Esports on Twitter to keep up with everything League of Legends Esports and I'll catch you back here next time.